For the months of May and June, we'll be giving away 50,000 IOS T tokens, along with three Ledger Nanos, two of them sponsored by Nimic, and one special edition Ledger Nano with an on-the-go kit. Winners announced July 1st. To enter, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on every video in May and June for your maximum number of entries. Hey, Bit Squad, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at EOS, or EOS, as most people say. I say EOS, so I'm going to continue to say it. Uh, EOS versus Tron versus IOST. And you may be saying, why do you pick those three to compare, and what are we going to compare them in, in terms of? Well, we're going to be looking at these three projects because these three are th three of the four big decentralized platforms, it's called the big four. And these are decentralized platforms that are having a very high level of transactions. Now, why would we pick these three out of the four? Well, the four are EOS, Tron, IOST, and of course, Ethereum. However, Ethereum is not gonna be discussed in this video because we are gonna be looking at which one of these three projects is the most decentralized in terms of DPoS, which we'll get into exactly what that means. Ethereum currently does not use DPoS as its consensus algorithm, so therefore it's not going to be involved in this conversation. And I think by the end of this, you guys are going to understand which one of these three projects is the most decentralized. Okay, so we first have to understand what is DPoS? It stands for Delegated Proof of Stake. It's a consensus algorithm similar to proof of work or proof of stake, except for it involves communities and voting on which nodes or witnesses that the community feels like are the most trustworthy. Now, this was actually created by Dan Larimer, who is behind EOS. He's part of Block One, which is the company that has created the, you know, created the EOS ICO and is in charge of basically, you know, getting the network started. So Dan Larimer created this because he felt like Proof of work required too much electricity and that eventually mining pools would be able to take over proof of work projects. And we haven't seen that 100%, but we have actually seen that Bitmain owns two of the, or the two largest Bitcoin mining pools. And at one point they were up to 41% of the network, which is way too close to 50% because as you guys know, 51% is what is required to attack a network. So if Bitmain were behind, I believe it's Ant Pool, and I can't remember the, the name of the other one, though are the two main mining pools for Bitcoin, if one company is behind both of those and they're able to get 51% of the hash rate, then they could attack Bitcoin. Now, I don't think that is gonna happen because I think Bitmain even itself understands that it would be very dangerous for themselves, for them, one company to try to approach those numbers, but yet it could be possible. So Dan Larimer came up with this DPoS idea. So the way DPoS is supposed to work is that the community is able to vote on the people or more the nodes, but there's always people behind the nodes that are the most trustworthy and are doing the most to kind of push the project forward. Now, at any given time, those should be able to change. The community should be able to decide at any given moment that right now we feel like this node is not pulling its weight. We want to choose another node. But if it gets to a point where the community does not have the power to interchange those nodes, then is it really decentralized? And that is what a lot of these projects are coming to realize that what happens is some of these nodes get so much power that it's almost impossible for them to be replaced by other nodes. And that would mean if one of these nodes decided to become a completely bad actor, that the community would have little to do to be able to change out that node. So we're gonna kind of look at the progression of what started with EOS, moved on to Tron, and what seems, in my opinion, to have been revolutionized by IOST, which spoiler alert, in my opinion, is the most decentralized. So let's start by looking at EOS. So it's important to note that also, there's a reason why these nodes at the top of these networks want to be block producing nodes. They want to be voted or what is called elected. So once you are elected as one of these nodes or representatives, they're called different things in different projects then you actually start earning. You're able to earn 
whatever coin it is that you are representing. And that's really, really big. So for EOS, they have 21 block producing nodes called super nodes. And these nodes are able to get basically all of the rewards that are available for being nodes on the system. Now, 21 is not a super high number if you're talking about controlling an entire system. So what that would mean is basically 11 nodes out of the 21 could band together and take over the system completely. Now you may say, oh, well, you know, that that's not likely to happen. Well, we already have instances in EOS of top block producing nodes banding together and accepting payoffs in order to keep their spots. So you can find this in a coin telegraph article i will drop the link down below just so you know that i'm not making this up now dan larimer argues that even with it having to have 11 nodes on a network to basically centralize it that you know they still feel like they're more decentralized than ethereum or bitcoin because it would only take three or four mining pools in order to take over bitcoin or ethereum whereas with eos it would have to have 11 block producing nodes working together. Now, is this a likely scenario that 11 would work together? I don't think that it is. However, it's much more likely, in my opinion, that 11 could take over, a, a, you know, EOS more than some of these other projects that we'll look at where the numbers are higher. Now, Dan Lermer has also said that centralization is not what EOS is after. That's a direct quote. It says decentralized decentralization isn't what we're after. What we're after is anti-censorship and robustness against being shut down. So what he's saying is, is the most important thing is that the system continues. It's not necessarily that it's centralized or decentralized, which seems to go against the very reason why he wanted to do DPoS in the in the past. That's why he said it was important uh, and why he really wanted to pursue it was to you know make sure things are more decentralized. And now he's saying, it doesn't really matter. And if you look at other projects from Dan Larimer, such as Steemit, a lot of people argue that Steemit itself is also centralized, as a lot of the people that got in at the very beginning are the people reaping all the rewards on Steemit, and it is a very high barrier for a new person to get in and start earning legitimate rewards. So all in all, while EOS may have started the DPoS trend, it definitely does not rank very high on the decentralization meter. And apparently to Dan Larimer, he really doesn't care. Okay, let's move on to Tron. So as a lot of you guys know, I've been very bullish on Tron in the past. And, you know, I still think it is a good project. We did have some drama surrounding Tron the other day. Uh, Tron co-founder and CTO leaves project alleging excessive centralization. Now, since then, Justin Sun has levied accusations against the CTO, Lucian Chin, that he actually was embezzling funds and that he had violated company rules and policies and that's why he was let go. But of course, he's arguing the other side. However, that's not really what I want to focus on. Whether or not, you know, he was let go or he left because it was centralized doesn't really matter. He brings up some points in this article that basically says that there are parts of Tron that are becoming centralized. And I'm going to have to agree that on some level, there is an amount of centralization with these super representatives. And I specifically know this because in the past, I was actually interested in becoming a super representative for Tron. I put out some tweets that I was looking into it. And eventually I realized that really to become one of those uh, super representatives, the 27 super representatives that Tron has as nodes, that it was gonna cost millions of dollars. And for me, millions of dollars is not something I'm going to put in to becoming a Tron node, because even if you have it, there's no guarantee that you can get in. It's kind of like a country club membership getting in as one of these super representatives. If you had done it in the very beginning, then the, the barrier would have been much lower. But once the 27 were locked in, isn't the right word because there's a continuous vote on those top 27. But as we'll see, it's really hard to break into that that you know, once you're locked into it, it's a good chance you're going to stay in it, which is not the point of decentralization. So the super representatives with Tron are compared to the super nodes of EOS. So here we go, we're gonna look down at some quotes from this article. The DPoS mechanism of Tron is pseudo decentralized. 
the top 27 super representative nodes, aka block nodes, have more than 170 million Tron votes, and most of them are controlled by Tron. It's hard for other latecomers to become block nodes, so they cannot participate in the process of block production. Token distribution is centralized, super representatives are centralized, code development is centralized, even the community is organized under centralization. Now, this is where it's important that I draw the distinction between uh, complete centralization and a higher level of centralization, because Tron itself is, is mostly decentralized. However, there are parts of it that are more decentralized than I believe the Justin Sun or anyone involved in Tron would want them to be. Like for me, being a person that wants to come in and entertain the idea of being a super representative, I would like the idea that to know that I would have the option to do that. That's truly decentralized. However, without millions of dollars, there's going to be very, very few people that could actually enter into possibly getting into that top 27 the nodes on the systems that are elected that really matter. And so that is a little disappointing. And that's why, honestly, I ended up moving over to IOST to become a node because the opportunity was there. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So when it comes to decentralization, Tron definitely ranks higher than EOS because it has 27 representatives that are elected as opposed to 21. So with EOS, you would have to have 11 to take over the system. With Tron, you would have to have 14 to take over the network or the system. So now let's look at IOST, which I think is doing things in a much better way. So guys, there is a reason that many EOS dApps, developers, and other members of the EOS community are coming over to IOST because many people that were, you know, wanted to get into EOS because of the idea of the decentralization they're realizing it's not as decentralized as they were hoping it would be. And now that their leader, Dan Larimer, has even said the decentralization is not the point, many people in EOS are looking for that truly decentralized cryptocurrency platform. And I would be of the opinion that IOST is that platform. So when it comes to IOST, it does things much differently than Tron and also than EOS, where EOS has 21 Tron has 27, uh, IOST doesn't have a set number. There's no set number. All you have to do to become elected in the IOST network is to have 2.1 million votes. With, I, with, with IOST, one vote equals one IOST. So hypothetically, if you wanted to have your own node on the network, all you would need is 2.1 million IOST, which I haven't done the math uh, recently, somewhere between 18 and $30,000 is probably where it is, which is much lower than the millions of dollars you would need for Tron, but not just that. With IOST, you have the opportunity to become a partner node, which is what I currently am. I am moving to a block producing node uh, in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, as a partner node, basically you make contributions to the ecosystem, which is what I do by all of the IOST videos. I do every single day uh, the IOST sections of my news videos. I'm trying to get the word out about IOST to other people as I really believe in what they're doing, not just from a technological standpoint, but from a philosophical standpoint behind decentralization. So all you have to do to get elected is make content and have people like that content or start a community or build a dApp or integrate IOST in some other kind of fashion. And if people like that, they can take their IOST and they can vote for you and help you to get elected. But if you did have between 18 and $30,000, whatever the number is sitting at right now, and you want to have your own node, all you would have to do is just go sign up for a node on IOST and then elect yourself with your amount of IOST. So it is a very, it's a much lower barrier to entry than any of these other DPoS platforms. Now, if you look here at the ranking on, um, at the ranking on uh, iost.biz here, you'll see I'm coming in at number 32. I am the top content creator for iost, at least so far. I could be knocked off in the future if somebody comes in and, uh, goes harder for IOST than me, which is going to be hard to do. But coming in at number 32, I've got 12.1 million votes. That's 12.1 million IOST that people have pledged to my node. 
Big thank you to everybody that's doing that. Uh, I have, for quarter one and probably for quarter two, I'll go ahead and say I doubt I will be knocked off my tier one status. So you'll get the maximum number of quarterly rewards. You can watch some of my other videos on IOST to learn more about what the quarterly rewards look like. But, you know, the, the thing about this is if you come through and look at all of these that are elected, now keep in mind, 21 elected nodes with EOS, 27 elected nodes with Tron, their super representatives, and look, here's 49 elected, but that's not all. <laughs> 98 elected, but wait, that's not all. There are right now 113 elected nodes on the IOST network. You're not going to beat that in the other current decentralized platforms. Now, eventually we may have another platform that comes away that maybe, or that comes along that's maybe able to develop a newer way that's even more decentralized. But this to me is as good as it gets right now. And it's gonna be hard for me to, find, to believe that anyone is going to have a better system than this in the future. Um, of course, the future is hard to predict because this is so decentralized. There will be many, many, many more nodes. Eventually, they want hundreds of nodes. And I've talked directly with the team. Uh, CTO Terrence Wang was on my Beards and Bitcoins podcast. And I brought this up to him, asking him about the decentralization. They're actually looking at lowering the barrier for the partner nodes. They have raised the barrier for block pr producing nodes. The minimum is 8 million, uh, 8 million IOST at this point to become a block producing node. And I think that really is, I, I think they raised it because there's a point where you become profitable as a node and there's a point where you're unprofitable and 8 million is probably a, around the break even point. So it wouldn't make sense for someone to run a node, a block producing node and have less votes than that. But you know, they are big on wanting this to be completely decentralized. Eventually they're, they're considering having the community taking over, uh, you know, uh, placing the tiers in which node deserves what tier there's five different tiers that you can earn it that you can have in your earnings for your node are going to be based on which tier that you're on obviously tier one being the highest tier which your boy is uh so you know this is a a, a project that is dedicated to decentralization that is their focus eos says decentralization is not what we're after iost says it is and if you believe in decentralization you believe in the philosophy behind it, then IOST is one you should check out. It doesn't make the same kind of marketing waves that Tron makes. It doesn't have the same $4 billion it raised in an ICO that EOS has. But what it has is a dedicated team of people that want nothing more than to create a fully decentralized platform. And if you're in crypto and you've moved past the stage where all you care about is money, then this is what we're after. This is what we're pushing for. This is how we create uh, social media websites that can't censor you. This is how we create you know, supply chain tracking companies that are decentralized. This is how we make it where the internet is truly decentralized. Because right now there's too much centralization. Your data is being sold. You, you're being taken advantage of. And we need platforms to come along that are going to change that. And I believe the IOST is that platform. So you guys make sure to check that out. Don't forget if you are in IOST to vote for my node, BitBoy Crypto. It's very easy to find me uh, it, on any voting platform, whether it's IOST, ABC, or BIS, or Token Pocket, whatever it might be. So make sure you guys check it out and vote for me there. You'll get a lot of good rewards. We're kind of in a good range. Uh, I think being in between number 20 and number 40 is really that sweet spot in the rankings. Uh, you know, it, because the way the IOST is set up, if you're number one, if you're a Huobi pool that has, uh, you know, like 20% of all of the votes or something like that, let's see what the number is, 16% uh, now, it's actually gone down. The way that the block producing works is even though Huobi pool has 16% of the total votes on IOST, it only has a one in 17 chance um, for earning rewards on every block that is produced. So once again, just a testament to how decentralized the network is, the voting is, and everything in between. So definitely give IOST a second look. Thanks for watching, guys. BitBoy out.